Hi, my name is Chad Wells and I'm an associate in the mechanical group at Birch Stewart Co-Osh and Birch. In just a few days, the United States Supreme Court will hear oral arguments that will determine what is the proper standard for a district court judge to enhance damages in patent infringement cases. The issue comes before the court based on two consolidated cases, Halo Electronics Incorporated versus Pulse Electronics and Stryker Corporation versus Zimmer Incorporated. 35 U.S.C. Section 284 defines damages for patent infringement cases. In patent infringement cases, damages can be awarded by the jury or the court. Section 284 states that, in either event, the court may increase the damages up to three times the amount found or assessed. On its face, the language appears straightforward by simply stating the court may increase damages. The question is, when should the court increase damages? To assist the district court in determining whether to increase damages, the Federal Circuit has established a two-part test as set forth in In Re Seagate Technologies, where the patentee must first establish by clear and convincing evidence that the infringer acted despite an objectively high likelihood that its actions constituted infringement of a valid patent. If the patentee is able to establish the first part of the test, the patentee then must show that this objectively defined risk was either known or so obvious that it should have been known to the accused infringer. If the patentee fails to establish either the objective inquiry prong or the subjective inquiry prong, then the district court is not to increase damages. As part of the Federal Circuit's jurisprudence, so long as a defendant presents a defense to infringement that was not objectively baseless, the first prong cannot be met. At issue in both Halo Electronics and Stryker Corporation, the defendants were able to muster defenses that were objectively not baseless, but ultimately unsuccessful. In each case, the patentees argued that the activities by the defendants leading up to the litigations should have outweighed the defenses developed by the defendants during the litigation. In Halo Electronics, the question presented to the United States Supreme Court is whether the Federal Circuit erred by applying a rigid two-part test for enhancing patent infringement damages under 35 U.S.C. Section 284 that is similar to the rigid two-part test the Supreme Court rejected last term in Octane Fitness versus Icon Health, which was looking at whether it was proper to impose attorney fees under the similarly worded statute of 35 U.S.C. Section 285. In Stryker Corporation, the question presented to the United States Supreme Court is, has the Federal Circuit improperly abrogated the plain meaning of 35 U.S.C. Section 284 by forbidding any award of enhanced damages unless there is a finding of willfulness under a rigid two-part test, when this court recently rejected an analogous framework imposed on 35 U.S.C. Section 285, the statute providing for attorney's fees awarded in exceptional cases. This is the reason why both cases are consolidated at the Supreme Court, because they present similar issues. In Octane Fitness versus Icon Health, which is the case providing the basis for challenging the Federal Circuit's current two-part test, the issue involved the language of 35 U.S.C. Section 285, which states simply, the court in exceptional cases may award reasonable attorney fees to the prevailing party. In interpreting this statute, the Federal Circuit had held that a case was deemed exceptional in two limited circumstances. First, when there has been some material inappropriate conduct typically during the litigation or securing of the patent. Second, when the litigation is both brought in subjective bad faith and objectively baseless. The United States Supreme Court held that the plain meaning of an exceptional case is simply one that stands out from others with respect to the substantive strength of a party's litigation position. Considering both the governing law and facts of the case, or the unreasonable manner in which the case was litigated. The United States Supreme Court rejected this two-part test and held that district courts can determine whether a case is exceptional based on the totality of the circumstances. Many expect that the United States Supreme Court will likewise find that the two-part test set forth by the Federal Circuit for increasing damages is not required by the plain language of the statute and that the standard will go back to the totality of the circumstances test. 
In fact, prior to In re Seagate, the Federal Circuit had established a totality of the circumstances test for increasing damages that considered several factors, including deliberately copying, whether after knowledge of patent protection did the defendant investigate the scope of the patent and did they form a good faith belief that it was invalid or not infringed, looked at the behavior as the party to litigation, the closeness of the case, the defendant's motivation for the harm, and attempt to conceal misconduct. These factors were often referred to as the Reed factors based on Reed Corporation versus Portek Incorporated. In a few months, the United States Supreme Court should issue opinion outlining the standard for district courts in determining whether to increase damages. It seems likely that the United States Supreme Court will replace the Federal Circuit's two-part test with a totality of the circumstances test.